Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, have you had enough of the EU referendum? Oh, of course not. But there's a Queen's speech next week on Wednesday in which we're promised Her Majesty will be talking about something other than Europe. So what will it be? When Her Majesty visits Parliament on Wednesday, front and centre in her speech will be measures for curbing extremism, including banning hate speakers from working with children and other vulnerable groups. And David Cameron will push forward with conservative plans for the British Bill of Rights in an attempt to assert the supremacy of UK courts in the run-up to the EU referendum. The Prime Minister will also press ahead with reforms to the adoption system to speed up the placement of children with permanent families. New rules will also be brought in to make Britain a world leader in the development of driverless cars. And the fishing port of Newquay may be about to become the UK's first spaceport. It's one of eight sites the government will be looking at. And finally, schools in England will be on the Queen's list this year. Along with the government's watered-down plans for academies, ministers will also now be scrambling to work out new rules to stop parents taking their children out of school for family holidays during term time, following a High Court ruling on Friday. Helen, I don't get the impression that there's much in this Queen's speech to detract from the referendum campaign. Well, and also, who knows whether or not any of it will happen. I mean, you were just talking in the last section about the Lords and the number of defeats mm. that have been inflicted there. This has been a really torrid legislative session for the government, not one that they had particularly massive ambitions for anyway. Mm. But you've also had situations where the whips don't seem to have known what's going on. The Sunday trading bill, for, for example, just seemed to the government didn't realise it didn't have the votes locked down in the way that it needed them to. So I think there's a real problem, which is no one knows who's going to be Prime Minister after June the 23rd. If uh, David Cameron loses, his whole entire party thinks that he won't be there anymore. So mm. who will there be to drive this legislation through? Theresa May is being put in charge of the British Bill of Rights. She's got a very complicated position on the EU where she thinks we should leave the ECHR but stay in the EU. And she's it's now supposed having to be your cake and eating it, I think, is what we pro, used to abuse Boris of. Yes, pro <laughs> having cake and pro eating cake. So I think it's really difficult to get excited about this. But then mm. it's not there to be getting excited about. It's, get, it's there to prove that the government is doing something. But to the extent that um, there is going to be any um, uh, theme to what Cameron announces, I think, uh, we have to go back to 2005. Remember when Cameron got elected, he said he wanted to be someone um, where sunshine wins the day. He told his party to stop banging on about Europe and he wanted to be seen as a social reformer rather than an economic reformer. And in just a few of the things that we've seen trailed in the Sunday papers, there's mentions of reform to the adoption system, mm -hmm. there's extension of the National Citizen Service, and it's kind of like the big society has been wrenched back from that early sort of period of Cameron. And I think he wants to think of his legacy as someone who is a slightly different, more Millenite, more One Nation type Tory, who wasn't just someone who talked about Europe and the economy. Would it be too much of an exaggeration to say the government's not running the country, the government's running the Remain campaign? Oh, I don't think that's an exaggeration at all, Andrew. I mean, it's hard to think of anything that's actually been achieved in recent weeks. The whole thing has been dominated by Europe. And the Queen's speech feels to me as a real process of going through the motions. This is something they have to do to mm. make it sound like there are plans of legislation to come forward. But I don't think anyone's going to get terribly excited about it. In particular, this British Bill of Rights. I had to look it up and check that is this really the same British Bill of Rights that David Cameron has been talking about? Out since the opposition years and it never seems to happen and ultimately the problem with it is unless you come out of the ECHR it's not going to make European any court. It, it, unless you come out of the European court it doesn't matter how many British bills of rights you have it's not going to make any in the difference end, you can always go to Strasbourg if you feel you've been hard done that's by. right OK. What was your takeaway with the Ian Duncan Smith interview? I think he's an interesting media performer. I'm not sure whether or not he's got appeal beyond the base. I think that's the really interesting thing there. So the swing voter that everybody's trying to target is, you know, to give a, a demographic example, tends to be an older northern man and a classic a Labour voter. And actually, who are the figures who can speak to those kind of people? I don't think Ian Duncan Smith is one of them. I actually think all politicians have got a problem. I was talking to some, some pollsters. They said, who's the figure who could convince people which way to vote? And they said somebody like... Um, you know, the guy from Money Supermarket. Actually, people want to hear what they see as <laughs> independent monetary experts. They Not think the guy from Wonga. <laughs> Probably not him. But, I mean, 
I mean, the Government Bank of England is is a more is a kind of the closest mm -hmm. you get to that in the political sphere. But they don't people just what, assume politicians are talking. Well, I think that there's this is still a real problem for the out campaign. You know that they still don't have enough people that appeal beyond preaching to the converted. I was at the uh, premiere of Brexit, the movie earlier what? this week, and oh, you know. I felt it was a missed opportunity. You know more. What's that um, the proper film? <laughs> So many commentators were wheeled out who were over the age of 50 yeah. and, you know, mm -hmm. the audience all loved it, but will it appeal beyond? I, I, I worry about Commenters that. Commenters over the age of 50 is never going to catch never on. Catch on. Uh, <laughs> one, what did you take away well, from Well, there was this wonderful moment where you had um, the John Major quote up, and I don't know if you'd have caught it, the viewers certainly would have, where Ian Duncan Smith just sort of winced with fury. And you realise <laughs> that this Tory civil war, uh, you know, the, the wounds were first fleshed open in sort of 30 years and ago. And they're still raw. This stuff is mm. deep. It goes back. This is a Maastricht rebel. And the other two quick things about um, uh, Ian Duncan Smith. One is that clearly immigration is his strongest card. And two, this idea that there's a conspiracy from all these people, this cabal of people talking to each other to keep us in. I think that idea that there's a conspiracy by the elites is going to be their strongest card. That and immigration. All right. And he did call effectively for the resignation of the Carney. governor of Mark the Carney. Bank yeah. of England. So there's a story for you. Now, the rhetorical heat has been turned up on both sides of the referendum debate this week, but let's just compare David Cameron's language in November, simply of last year, with what he said yesterday. Some people seem to say that really Britain couldn't survive, couldn't do okay outside the European Union. I don't think that is true. Let's be frank, Britain is an amazing country. We've got the fifth biggest economy in the world. We're a top 10 manufacturer. If we vote to leave on the 23rd of June, we will be voting for higher prices. We will be voting for fewer jobs. We will be voting for lower growth. We will be voting potentially for a recession. Well, it was bound to happen that he, I mean, he's dined out on the Eurosceptic shilling for all these years and it com contrasts hugely with what he's saying now. It was bound to come back and haunt him. I think it's remarkable the extent to which David Cameron has been sort of radicalised by his own <laughs> campaign. It's as if, you know, being in number 10 at the moment is like being in a sort of cult where you become completely... You know, he's lost everything about his hinterland, his heritage. David Cameron is fundamentally Eurosceptic, mm. mildly so, but fundamentally Eurosceptic. And now we hear somebody banging the drum as if... Armageddon is going to happen if we vote out. It's bizarre. I mean, it, it, it's a problem. You know, what's the true David Cameron? Is it the one that we had only last November? We haven't even had to go way back into the archives of 10 years ago, though I think maybe we should to see what he was saying then. Um, or is it the one now that kind of implies that if we leave, there's armed conflict? Because I tell you, I tell you the, the issue really for me is, though I'll never get a chance to ask him this, is... Why, if you believe this, would you risk armed conflict for two minor changes to our welfare benefits? Yeah, I think there's a really interesting difference between him and Theresa May in the way that her speech played this. And she said, no, the sky won't fall in if we leave Europe. But I've looked at it in a very dispassionate way and I've decided, mm. it, you know, it's, it, I, on, on balance, balance I'm, I want to that, campaign for us to remain That's a realistic in. line to tell. And actually, here's something you don't hear very often. Jeremy Corbyn has handled this better than David Cameron. There, too, is another politician who is naturally eurosceptic. He mm. follows the traditional left-wing line that there is a very corporate interest and there is a democratic deficit. But you haven't actually... He, although he hasn't given massive speeches about it, when he is asked about the EU, he manages to give an answer, as he did in his speech yesterday, that is about social protections and is about workers, mm. and actually sounds quite convincing. What do you make of it? Well, you go back to when Cameron actually announced the referendum. It was born of a moment of panic. And it's interesting that often in politics, because we have a culture which is so short-termist, you're thinking, what can we do to deal with mm. the rising threat? Actually, it was a panic born about by the rise of UKIP. Nigel Farage was doing fantastically well. Um, little did they know that UKIP would get four million votes nearly, but still only one MP. And actually, it's backfired massively. I mean, if, as, just as you say, Andrew, if um, this was going to risk Armageddon, it was incredibly stupid and irrational of a Prime Minister who bangs on about national security mm. to have granted a referendum in the first place. Exactly. Well, I want to ask you about the polls, but we haven't got time, but we'll see uh, by next week, maybe when all this stuff from the IMF and the Bank of England and the Treasury, maybe it's when it's sunk in, does it have any difference yet? Because so far we've not seen any. Now, Viewers in the northwest of England will have just seen Conservative MP for Cheadle, Mary Robinson, challenged about whether expenses for volunteers in a Conservative election battle bus in the run-up to last year's general election should have been charged to her local campaign 
or to the National Tory campaign. Now, the Conservative Party is under investigation by the Electoral Commission and several police forces over the matter. Mrs Robinson insisted she'd done nothing wrong. The party was quite clear to us locally that it would be included in the national spend and that's what we relied on and from my point of view it was never going to be a national, a national um, a spend or expense for me. The national party told you this is going to be a national expense? The national party were clear that it was part of the national expense. It's not going away Helen is it? No, and I think it's really important because journalists come under a lot of flack and I don't think anyone will w waste any tears on us, but this mm -hmm. is a very difficult story to report. It mm -hmm. is about minor details. It's about accounting, essentially. And actually, the, this story has been kept alive entirely by journalists. You're not hearing the other parties well, talking about it. Particularly by Michael Crick on Channel 4 News. Exactly. And, and I think that is testament to the fact that, you know, things do come out eventually. It is very mm -hmm. hard to keep them down. And, it, and maybe if, if people are sitting at home feeling that journalism is all terrible, for once, perhaps, they could feel slightly more friendly to us than they usually do. I just think of the fury of the Labour moderates, the Chukramunas, the Tristrams, the Yvette Coopers, who are thinking, this is an open goal. This is what a Labour Party, if it was well organised, if it was well run, if it had strong leadership, it should absolutely, OK, it might be a bit exposed in its own expenses, but they should absolutely be exploiting this. But have got complete silence. I mean, so far, you've got 11 police forces mm -hmm. are investigating the Conservative Party about fraud and not a pip squeak. With a criminal but, but penalty. Reason, With a criminal penalty. The, I mean, reason, it's the reason they the are so being. quiet, I understand, is because they're up to their necks in it too. And that is a difficulty. I understand that it's been very, very difficult for broadcasters to get commentators on, from, to get MPs on from other parties, because they are all concerned that they have too much to hide themselves. Well, when I asked Alan Johnson about it on this mm. week on Thursday night, uh, he didn't know anything about it. Michael Patilla didn't know much anything about it, but he's always on a train, so he's <laughs> got an excuse. But Alan Johnson didn't know anything about it. I, I found that quite remarkable. It's a hard story to take to, to digest, I think, is one of the things. Yeah, is that once that. you try and explain it, how do you, what's the one sentence explanation for that? And particularly when there's all this thunder going on about in the EU, it is absolutely crowding everything out. Well, uh, maybe not one sentence, but the money was charged to the national campaign, which was under the legal limit. It should have been charged to the local campaigns. Uh, but that would have put it over, over the, the legal limit, and that's where the criminal penalties are. But this is a big story about election. I mean, uh, the way our elections funded is ridiculous. I mean, and this is something that comes up. And of course, as soon as someone gets into government, they suddenly lose interest in the you idea of election You ought to cover an American election if you want to think of ridiculous. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, there has been a bit of billion dollars about to be spent uh, on this. How serious is this for the... Con all right, you, you can say, oh, they're all that and so on. But the evidence we have is about the Conservatives and last year's general election. How serious? Well, the fact that we've got one party government in England and Scotland means I think that they'll get away with it. Um, I don't think the, the Labour Party, the opposition, is well placed to exploit it so broadly speaking I think they'll get away with it the problem is it will solidify and consolidate a feeling lots of people have which is that basic politicians are a bunch of corrupt crooks which I think is a shame because most of them aren't but this certainly seems that those allegations it certainly stinks well we shall see as the police investigations go on and the electoral commission into the national spend is happening too I've been getting away with it all my life.